why don't you all go ahead and get up on your feet. And we're going to, uh, yeah, let's get before the Lord tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you here. We love you. We love what you're doing. Lord, we love uh, just to come and gather in your presence. Lord, we love that uh, we don't need an agenda because you know everything before we ask, but we also love that you like us to bring our petitions and our requests. You like us to bring what's on our heart, what's on our mind. Lord, it doesn't bother you, Lord. It doesn't bother you when we come and we're just venting to you. Lord, I love that you love that. And so, God, I pray that you'd find a bride after your heart, a bride after, Lord, uh, making a place for you. That's what we want to be about, making a place for you. And so, Lord, we come and pray that your, that your presence would come on and hover over this region. kingdom come. We love you, Lord. We love you. Come on, sing this together. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my rock, yeah. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest night and storm. What a heights of love, what depths of Still, when striving seems my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Yes, yeah. Come on, in Christ alone. In Christ alone, who took on flesh. Of God in helpless faith, in this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones He came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on Him. Oh. 
you right now I can't help this but uh, the first like couple of summer feeling days my mind goes immediately to camp songs and I just can't I can't get away from it until like you know the fall until like Columbus Day weekend so um, we're gonna start just doing some camp songs everybody's gonna be good with that right is that all right counselor and I will call upon the Lord <laughs> who is worthy to be praised. Come on, sing it, say. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord. Come on, let's sing it out. I will. And I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. Who is worthy to be so shall I be saved from my enemies. Saved from my I'll enemies. Sing it, I'll say. And I will call upon the Lord. Here we go, say. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The shall we be saved from our enemies. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your hand is moving still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me out right now. I know you're able in my God come through again. Yes. You
your statement on the cross, your statement at an empty grave, your statement in an upper room, Lord, they were more than enough to declare your power. They were more than enough to reveal who you are, and yet still, God, even in our own lives and so so often messed up lives, God, so often in spite of our mistakes and failures, Lord, you never do. And so, God, I thank you tonight for that statement. Lord, that your grace for the church of Jesus Christ just never runs out. And the glory that you desire to share and impart, Lord, it just keeps coming. I just want to invite you, go ahead and get out of your seat. Go ahead and meet us at this altar tonight. If you're in the middle of, of something, maybe you're on a, a battlefield and you feel like you're out of ammo, there's nothing left, and you're just kind of waiting there to get hit. If you're in the room tonight, make a, a comfortable spot down here. Let's just start to speak his truth over our lives, over our families over those that we were going to bring to him tonight in prayer. Let's first bring praise to those situations before we bring those situations to him. Let's, let's bring truth of who he is into the situation tonight. In water you turn into wine. You open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Yes. None like you and into the darkness, into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes, out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, my God. None like you. Let's do it again. Say, water you turn. Sing it over your life. Say, water you turn into wine. Every time now you open the eyes of the
God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Oh, our God. I'm singing. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, come on, that's your part. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then who can stop us? Sing it again, say, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then one more time and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God
Let's do it with heaven tonight. Let's do it with heaven. All the saints. And all the saints and angels.
I've, we've been worshiping. Um, I feel like the Lord has just been 
reiterating something in me over and over and over. For those of you, especially those of you that are down here, that you feel like you're going through stuff, that you're being bombarded, that maybe the enemy is just like all over you and, you, and you're just going through it. Um, and I feel like the Lord gave me uh, one part and he gave Sam the, the second part. Actually, I met with a young guy uh, earlier today. And as I was talking with him, this truth started coming up in me. And I'm just going to share it real quick, just a couple verses. And this is Jesus praying to the Father before he is crucified. And he's praying to the Father. He says, now I'm coming to you, like to the Father. And I told them many things. He's talking about the disciples that are with him. I told them many things while I was with them in this world so that they would be filled with my joy. I have given them your word, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. And I'm, ask, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for those, for all those who will ever believe in me through their message. And just hear the heart of Jesus when he's saying to you, he said, the world is going to hate you. The evil one hates you. But the way he intercedes to the Father for you is he says, Lord, I'm not asking you to remove them from this place. I'm not asking you to pull them out of this situation. I'm not asking you to remove them from the world, but to be with them while they're in it and to keep them safe. Over, over in, uh, in Luke, there's this moment where Jesus looks at Simon right before he's arrested. And he says, Simon, Simon, the evil one is seeking to sift you. In the NLT, it says, to sift all of you. And he goes, you know, but he like pats him on the shoulder. He's like, but it's okay. Because when you come back, strengthen your brothers. He didn't say... You know, when he, when he asked to sift you, the father told him, no, you can't. He said, no, no, no. The enemy wants to sift you like wheat. And when he does, hang in there. You're going to be all right. And when you come back, make sure you strengthen those around you. I'm telling you, I feel like we, we're always praying that the Lord removes us from our situations that he delivers us from our sickness or from our persecution or from this horrible thing we're going through. But the Lord has this amazing way of using those things, from allowing them to come into our lives to do a work that will only take place when that thing actually comes against you. The same way he did it with Job. The enemy desired to sift him like wheat, and so the Lord allowed him to. And have fulfilled God's purposes and plans through that situation. And so I actually want to encourage you, hang in there. The, the Bible says that he has never left you and he has never forsaken you. He has never left you and never forsaken you. And as I was telling this young man earlier, even in the most pivotal moment in history, Satan thought he won. He crucified the Savior of the world. And he thought he won. He played right into the, the purposes and the plans of the Father. And the enemy is out to kill and steal and destroy. Stand firm. Stand firm. He has never left you. He has never forsaken you. And perhaps is it that the Lord is allowing this to happen in your life right now to perfect his purposes and plans in you. So Sam's just going to finish this word. He's got one scripture to finish this word, and, and he's going to pray for you guys. How do I follow that up? I don't know. Um, this is Jacob right after um, he flees from Esau because Esau, he stole 
his blessing. Then Jacob departed from Beersheba and went towards Haran. And he came to a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of the place and put it under his head and laid down in that place. And then he has this dream of this ladder. And the angels are descending and ascending. And I just really felt tonight that the Lord is taking your commonplace and making it a place of encounter. And if we remember the context of that little snippet of the, of the scripture, is that he was fleeing from his brother who threatened to kill him, but he went right into Laban. And I, and I believe that a lot of us want to be delivered from our circumstance, but the Lord's anointing is actually driving you into one. I propose to you tonight that the Lord is driving you into an encounter. And what I find so beautiful about that scripture is that he lays his head on a rock, which I believe is Christ. The head of Israel rested his head of Israel. And then when he woke up, he's like, wow, this is an amazing place. This is the house of God. This is Bethel, Bethel. And he took that rock and set it on top of an altar and poured oil on it. And I think there's so many revelations around that. But it was just like Christ before and Christ after. It was Christ, Israel, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and we see the church. It's the Lord pouring out his spirit on his people. So, Father, I just ask you to turn this commonplace to a place of holiness, a place of your house. And that those who are fleeing from persecution and affliction and from, and from trauma and from situations where they feel like they cannot run far and fast enough, but you are there where they rest. And Father, let this be a people that rests their head on the rock of Christ. And not on the worries and the shaky sand of their situations which will turn and fold. But on the, on the rock which they actually anoint and say this is an amazing place. And that there would be encounters tonight, Father. That people would look back and be like, that was anointing the stone moment. This was a turning point. This was a, a, an anointed place to, that I encountered the Lord and it changed my life. So, Father, would you give us eyes to see and a heart to know this situation, God. That this is a pivotal moment, God. This is the match strike to a fire. So, if you're hungry for an encounter with God tonight, I invite you to the front, to the altar. And to rest on Jesus. I feel like there's a de there needs to be a declaration of faith that you are running, but you are resting on him. So I just call you up right now.
something new about how we fight, something new about the weaponry that we use. Um, and so there's a couple of pieces tying together. Uh, Miss Donna just came up to me and said she's been singing all week. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. And uh, I feel like he's <clears throat> shifting how we think about how we fight. So uh, earlier this week, heard Pastor John give someone a word um, about a mace being tied around their ankle. Like the enemy has tried to latch the mace onto your ankle and it's been kind of holding you back, right? The big old ball with the spikes coming out and it's been holding you back, right? The ball and chain, yeah, okay. And so he picks it, he said, you're going to pick it up and the chain breaks 
and I saw something actually in a different direction than where he went, and I do believe that. Um, but I actually saw the ball and chain around your, your ankle, and I saw the person start to use it like a skip it. <laughs> Wish I had a church in here, man. <laughs> okay. He started to use it. If you, if you didn't know, look at Pastor John. He got you, okay? I always hated those things. I really did. I always hit myself in the ankle. I don't have good ankles as it is, right? But I saw the person with the ball and chain on their ankle start to use it. And, and, and Pastor John was funny because he said when, when they picked it up and the chain broke, they started to swing it around. And it almost created like a force field around them where the enemy couldn't get up on them. And I thought, again, when my sister used to do the skip it, there was a force field around her that required me to back up. Because she was trying to hit me, I'll tell you that. And tonight, my friends, I think that the thing that has been a ball and chain to you is supposed to be a skip it. I think the thing that has been holding you back and tying you down I actually think that you're supposed to be uh, so not intimidated by it that it becomes a game. That what the enemy has put in your way not only turns for good, but turns for games. It's like, you, you couldn't get me if you tried. You couldn't bring me down if you tried because the joy of the Lord is my strength. So I'm going to be happy. I'm going to skip it all day long because that is how I fight and I win. All right. Because our weapons are not carnal, <laughs> okay? He, he'll use the foolish thing to confound the wise. Tonight, I want you to take your ball and chain, and I want you to tell him you can't get me anymore. As a matter of fact, you've been preparing me. I'm much stronger than I used to be because I used to have to drag a skip it, and I've been dragging a ball and chain, so I've actually got more strength. You've actually strengthened me in this space. My friends, look at it different. See your weapon as different tonight, and take that thing, turn it into a testimony, and push the enemy back. Push him back. Push him back. Because you got the ball and chain spinning around, okay? In Jesus' name, God, I thank you that you are teaching us how to fight tonight. I thank you that you are changing our concept of what a weapon is. I thank you that you're taking anything that the enemy uses and putting in our hand as a weapon. I thank you that it's like David going back uh, for Goliath's uh, his sword. God, I thank you that you have given us weapons along the way. And tonight, tonight, God, we thank you that the chain is either broken <laughs> or we're using it for your glory and your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The weapon may be formed, but it's not going to prosper. I feel like we just got to put skip it in this song somewhere. I thought that was only for white kids, but I, mean, I feel a lot better now. I feel a lot better. I hated it too, bro. Esther, you did not have a skip it, girl, stop. Oh, my Lord Jesus. The skip it may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, I'm going to break it off and kick somebody's butt with it. Because the God I serve knows only how to child. Come on, saints, say. My God will never fail. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. Yeah. For the Oh! 
time you take you take what the enemy meant for evil yes and you turn it for good watch him tonight you turn it for good watch him tonight get your eyes on him tonight see what he's doing you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good
Listen, since we're doing stuff a little different tonight, I, I love this song, right? Even before we started singing this song, I, uh, there was something that I felt like the Lord wanted us to do. And you gotta, you got to press into this because it's, we're not choosing to be ignorant of how difficult our situation may be or how serious it may be. Some of you may have just recently got a diagnosis that you're like, man, I need a healing. Some of you may be in some really serious circumstances or situations that you need freedom from. But I just feel like tonight, one of the things that I want to, to overcome the, the victim mindset and the self-pity tonight. The victim mindset and the self-pity. So what I'm going to invite you to do, and maybe we'll just do like two or three at a time while we're worshiping. We'll take some pauses. If you are in the middle of what you would describe as a battle or a war or something that you're believing God for and you're feeling it, right? What I'm going to ask you to come down and just kind of line up over here and like two or three people at a time. I want you to testify the victory that you are you have in Jesus Christ, right? So this this is a part of this is a part of the prophetic that we get really weird about or we get nervous about. Okay, because we don't want to name it and claim it. We don't want to declare something that hasn't happened yet. But there is a part of prophecy that I know the Lord wants to continue to develop in us as an act of faith where you know what the truth of the Word of God is. You know what He has already spoken over your situation. If it's sickness, you are already healed. That healing was complete 2,000 years ago. If it's finances, he is your provision. He has already provided. It may not be in your hand yet, but it has already happened. That's it, yeah. So what I would like to do is get up here and just say, God is going to meet me in this place the, that Sam was talking about. The place that God is going to meet me in is in my diagnosis of I need a, a, a pacemaker, right? God is going to meet me in meeting me in the situation of my finances. God is meeting me in my marriage right now, and I know that he is healing my marriage. And I, hallelujah, I am free. You're already declaring that you are free, even if you don't see it yet. All right? Can we just, like, like exercise our muscles of faith tonight? And we're going we're gonna to declare the word of the Lord over our situation. All right, so I'm going to be over here. If you, if you have the guts to believe that the God who says he will do what he says he will do, if you have enough to, uh, faith to trust him, then just meet me down over here. And what we'll do is we'll have like two or three people at a time declare that. Pastor Zach's going to keep worshiping. And we'll just intermittently on his cue we're going to just throw a couple of these prophetic declarations into worship. Does that make sense? All right. We're, gonna, we're just doing it different tonight. We're going to skip it. We're skipping the whole thing. All right. You're skipping. You're, you're collecting a class in prophecy right now. Okay. You're skipping it. So, all right. So just come over here and then we're just going to keep worshiping and then yes. we're just going to release some of these. And I'm calling on the God of Jacob. Yes, Lord. Whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses. Yes, he is the one who opened up the oceans. Come on, if you think he still can, say, I need you now to do the same thing for me. Yeah. All right, here we go. The, the, the first couple. Karen, come over here. You guys, the first couple of you. Keep it, you're just testifying really quick. I testify and claim right now that I am healed. I was healed. His neck is straightened out. I'm already dancing in freedom. I'm already living it. So thank you, Jesus. For the suddenly in front of non-believers, Lord. Yes. Woo. I dedicate that I believe that the Lord will heal my marriage. And my husband is going to have surgery this week that everything will be fine. And he will heal my leg that is swollen. In Jesus' name I believe. Amen. My name is Priscilla. I'm 21 and I'm getting a pacemaker uh, in about a month. So, yeah, that's 
I'm healed. Amen. Yeah. You're not getting a pacemaker. You're getting a way maker. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God. My situation I'm in a mess so I'm God gets the victory I'm, I'm gonna, he's gonna see me through I testify that my marriage is gonna be healed through the power of Jesus Christ and that my husband's heart is gonna be softened because right now things are a mess That's good. I testify that God is healing my heart and making me free sister are going to come home to Jesus and I'm testifying that my relationships are going to be healed with my sisters and I'm testifying that all attacks against um, my husband's business are going to be struck down and destroyed I testify that he is the God of my finances and I testify that he is the God to give me wisdom and knowledge and to guide me to who I am to be. You heard your children then. You hear your children now. You are the same God. You are the same God. Oh, you answered prayers and served prayers back then. And you will answer now. You are the same God. This one's for you, say you were a provider then. You were a provider then. You are providing now. You are the same God. You are the same God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm testifying that I was healed, and although I had a minor setback, I'm believing God's going to continue the healing, and I'm going to get stronger and stronger. I just want to thank Jesus that the opioid epidemic is over, that they are sobering up, they're healed, they're whole, they're chasing after the addicted, and they're all set free in Jesus' name. I testify that I'm no longer a victim, I'm a victor in Christ Jesus. clear that my uh, wayward children are coming back to Christ and their families. I testify that our God begin, uh, finishes everything that he started. Amen. 
I testify that God has healed me from allergies and eye pain during night. that I'm done being a victim. God's daughter is not a victim. I'm done with all that. I'm testifying our daughter is on the list for a liver transplant. She'll never need it. She will be healed soon. Yes. Amen. testifying that my broken heart is healed and that my family and my husband's family is completely 100% restored. I'm testifying that the Lord's taking the things that the enemy has used to try to make me weak and weaken my faith and he's using those things to make me stronger Come on, and closer girl. to him. Come on. Come on. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So rock. Oh rock, oh rock of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Come on, say you freed. You freed the captives then. And you're free. Hearts right. Now. Hannah, that's you for you. You are the same God. Yeah. You are the same God. Yes. And you touch the lepers then. And I feel your touch right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. I'm calling on the Holy Spirit. that our prayer say and come and fill me again oh i just don't think we're done with that tonight so come and fill me again oh, oh like you did that upper room come and fill me again. oh like you did in jesus The Spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come and move over us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come and move over us. One more time. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come and move on. Come rest on us. Say. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Sing it again. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Come, over us. come rest. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Feel 
Tell the Lord tonight, we're not done with that, say hold. thinking about, you know, anybody that's ever um, had a little brush fire going, and uh, I don't know if there's anybody in here, and you, you're you a little irresponsible when it comes to fire, I don't know if there's anybody else like that, I'm like that, and I'm just, I'm somebody, you know, I'll get a brush fire going, and then I'll be like, well, I got some more stuff to add, and a responsible person waits until you know, the fire's burned down, then you put more on it because otherwise it just keeps getting bigger. But the problem is, is that you get that fire going and then the wind starts to blow. And I can think in the upper room, you know, we we all see these little neat tongues of fire. Y'all seen a picture of the upper room? But is anybody old enough you remember it? You were there. I see Ty Fields here. Ty. That's what happened to you and me, our hair on top. It's not that we're it's not that we're losing it, it's that it burned up with the tongue of fire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but 
But if you were there, if you remember, or maybe you've just seen a picture, a neat little picture, and there's like a little little dollop of whoop, beep, just a little neat little little teardrop of flame. And we think that's what the tongues of fire, but how many of y'all know that it wasn't just the fire that showed up in the upper room, it was also a rushing wind. Fire does not stay neat when the wind starts to blow, okay? Fire doesn't stay tamed or contained when the wind starts to blow. Fire turns into something that can no longer be held in the upper room. And if you remember the story, what happened was when the Holy Spirit poured out a fire, the tongues of fire, and then the wind started to blow, those folks couldn't stay there. They couldn't just turn that into a, a really powerful prayer meeting. I think there's some people in this church, and we think that the goal, the ultimate goal, is for us to have a really powerful prayer meeting. Right? Thank you, Esther. Thank you. Everybody's like, ooh, it was almost there. I get those people. You know, this one of my high horse, this one of my soapboxes. It's like, we were almost there. Almost where? You were already in the upper room. The tongues of fire came. The issue is you stayed there when that fire was never meant to be contained there. The wind blew so it would chase your butt out of that upper room and down into the streets of Jerusalem. That's where the fire belongs is out there. The glory of God is never going to cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. And if the fire stays in the prayer meeting, if the fire stays at the altar, no. Revival is not a church service that's lit. That's right. Revival is when the fire in the church service burns the church to the ground yeah. and there's no wall that can contain it anymore. Yeah. I wonder I wonder if there's anybody in here and you just stop being so doggone responsible with your flame. You just stop being so dignified with your little tongue of fire. Some of us, that neat image of that little tongue of fire, it, it happened to us when we got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you feel like, you feel like that neat tongue of fire is the prayer language that you were given. And I've seen too many people for too long wear that, that baptism of the Holy Spirit like a badge. Your badge means nothing in the upper room. Your badge doesn't mean squat in this room. No. It's out there. New England needs that fire. New England needs that power. This region that you've been called to, and yes, I say called to. This region is desperate for the power that is in this room tonight. The power of that testimony. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And we walk past this thing and you're out there. And you're like, yeah, this is my, your testimony was not just meant for the upper room. Your, your ability to heal and to be healed was not just meant for the upper room. It didn't stay there very long. They were there until it came and then they went out, spilling out into the streets, speaking a language, the language of the people. And the kingdom came. And the kingdom came. I spent too many years of my life praying for the fire to come. Praying for the rain to come. Praying for the wind to come. When Jesus taught us, pray for the kingdom to come. You already have the fire. You already have the rain. That wind is blowing across your soul tonight. Let it burn. Let it burn. Lord Jesus. Let's do this for a minute. Let's take a minute here before the Lord. And let, you know, when it says, and they came out of the upper room and they went into the streets of Jerusalem, take a minute and ask the Holy Spirit, 
what, what street am I called to? It might not be a street name, like the street you live on or something like that, but ask the Lord because that street might just be a hallway in your office building. It might be a, it might be a room. It might be a, a relationship. It might be a, a, over a fence in your backyard, a conversation that needs to, to happen where you start speaking a language maybe that you haven't known, but that the Holy Spirit gives you to be able to speak into somebody's life. And don't forget, upon first glance, it looked crazy. Some of you, you're, you're, you, you don't want the crazy. I don't want to be mistaken for being a day drinker. <laughs> well, that's what happened. That's literally what happened. Get your Bible out. Until the men of God stand up and say, these are not drunk as you suppose. And he calls their attention to the hour of the day, but I think he was calling their attention to the Kairos hour. Because in the Kronos, we're in a time of day when, yeah, the, the, crazy, the, the crazy thing doesn't make sense. But in the Kairos, prophecy is being fulfilled before our very eyes. When the Lord gives you that street, step out of your seat and come down to this altar. And if you can, as you do it, imagine yourself coming down the stairs of that upper place, coming down out of that place that religion has taught us to stay in because it's superior, it's holier. But it's not where Jesus stayed. He would go up and he would meet with the Lord. He would go up and he would be filled with vision and, and impartation. Jesus would go to a high place and he would meet with the Father and receive the marching orders and then he would come down. Then he would be obedient. Then he would walk in it. If the Lord gives you that street, that person, it might just be a face of somebody. I love these. It's somebody you haven't even met yet or seen. The Lord just shows you a face, some girl in a red sweater. When you see it, come down out of that upper room and come meet me at this altar tonight. Come on, let's just take a second.
your kingdom come down not halfway to an upper room oh, but all the way down into these tombs let your glory fall not halfway to a church anymore Jesus, the Spirit revealed to me when John was, Pastor John was talking about, instead of being, asking the Lord to remove those that are in the world, but to ask God to meet them right where they're at, I am that one. There were so many praying for me. And it took great men of God to come to prison to preach the word to me. And I remember Hosea 4, 6. For my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And because Edwin rejected that knowledge, Edwin was rejected from being a priest unto him. And because I've forgotten the laws of our God, my children got rejected because of me. That generational curse that came from my forefathers to me, I passed it down to my son. And today I declare to you right now that my son now serves God. It went from generational curses to generational blessings. And I give the Lord the praise, the glory, and the honor. I have so much to be grateful for. And this is why I love to worship God. Because he took a wretch like me. And it took some great men in God. Look amongst you. As Jack said, call out a street. I've been to Providence with HPC and I've been to Fall River. And I've seen many that are lost. And I cry out to them, Lord, that you would choose them and adopt them into your family, into your kingdom, Lord, as you did me. And I speak right now that I renounce the things that Satan has plans for because the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. I declare it right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, bring victory to those that need you, Lord, that they too will receive the salvation knowledge of Jesus Christ. There is a way out of this madness. It's called Jesus. And I thank you for that this evening, Lord Father. And I, I just want to ask, Lord, that we be blessed coming in here, blessed going out of here, Lord. Thank you for bringing me here to HPC, Lord, to be part of this wonderful body, Lord. For I am forever grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. And you're the God of this city You're the King of these people You're the Lord of this nation Come on, church You are You're the light You're the light in this darkness You're the hope to the hopeless 
hearts. You're the peace and the restless. Oh, you are. I'll say there is. And there is no one like our God. Yes. And there is no one like our God. Oh. Greater things. And greater things have yet to come. And greater things are still to be done in this city. say this before we transition into something else. Um, I, I uh, just got this sense as I was just worshiping through that. 
And I think a lot of times we're expecting the call to go do that. You know, some of us, it's like, well, I'll go do that if the Lord tells me to. But, and, and that makes sense for a believer who is not filled with the Holy Spirit. That makes sense for a believer who does not, uh, has not gone to that, that high place, to that upper room, has not met the Lord in the glory and has received his spirit. But that spirit in you, it, it, it doesn't call you out from outside of you. It drives you out from inside. And, you know, we've had a lot of words about growing up. We've had a lot of pro prophetic stuff and visions and dreams about maturation and, and, and growing into uh, the boldness and the confidence of, of who we are in Christ. And, and if you want a real life practical application of that, that's so important, like real life, like not just like, oh, I'm more mature now because I read the Bible more every day or something. A real life version of this is when you're not waiting for an external call to go and bring truth or speak life or prophesy or, or, or believe, but you're being driven from the inside. You're being compelled from the inside. See, that was the whole thing. Even, even Jesus, this is, this is interesting. He's living in the already, but the not yet, right? 2000 years ago, he's showing us these two different things. Uh, the difference between, okay, so the Holy Spirit comes down and rests on him at his baptism, but at the same time, he, he keeps going back to the Father saying, I'm not doing anything that the Father doesn't tell me to do. But what's interesting is what he leaves his disciples with is this idea that the one coming after him would be the one to teach, to drive, to, to compel. So if you have the Holy Spirit, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then we'll have another conversation. But I'm looking out of this room tonight and I'm seeing people, the fire already fell on you. The baptism, you already went in and you got it. And so I think that sometimes the hang up can be, we're, we're backwards, we're the, we're the yet, but not already. We, we, we're going backwards. The enemy wants us to come backwards to a place. Well, I'm not going to go do it unless, you know, I'm drawn to it. But the Lord isn't there. That's why you need to go there. You need to carry him. He's not calling you to a place where he's not. He's calling you from a place where he is, the throne of your heart. He's the man behind the wheel. It's like he's not the guy with the tow truck trying to get your car out of a ditch. No, he's the guy behind the wheel of your heart trying to get you to drive over to the ditch and help the other guy that's still in it. And I just, I feel like we uh, underestimate the power of his spirit. We underestimate what it means to have that bond, that down payment, that seal that engagement ring. We underestimate what it means to already be his, to already be the bride. Taste the power that you have already. The not yet is that we're not walking in it yet. The already is that he's here, he's there. That's why we have a whole ministry here designed to, to disciple people into yielding. I know a lot of us, we don't consider dis yielding as discipleship. You think discipleship has to be a DVD series or, or something that you go through a workbook. Jesus Christ, help us with this, Lord. But the, the, the interesting thing is yielding is like maybe the most intense discipleship that anybody could have. Because we're told that he'll be our teacher, he'll be our comforter, he'll be all these different things. We try to disciple people by making those man-made things. Right. When the Lord is saying, hey, if you'll, if you'll listen to me, I'll drive you into those places. Yeah. I'll pull you out of wherever else you need to be because I'm still behind the wheel. Yeah. Lord, I pray you resensitizing of hearts in this room tonight. God, 
God, can we, can we just start back over from being kids again, baptized in the spirit again? Can we go back to that place before we were all prideful and religious, before we were all distinguished and dignified? Lord, bring us back out to the field. Bring us back out when it was just you and us and the, and the harp and a slingshot. Bring us back when we didn't need to ask you, God, should we kill the lion? Should we kill the bear? But there's an instinct in us that comes from an intimacy with you. And that instinctually, we instinctively we respond to, to our circumstances, to our surroundings with faith, with fearlessness, with boldness. Lord, we don't want to be the David that's counting troops, wondering if it's a good idea to go to battle. We want to be the David that doesn't give a crap. We got the, we got the slingshot. We got the stone. We got the faith. Yeah. Lord, bring us back to that place. Lord, where we're not sitting around wondering if it's your will for your glory to cover the earth. Lord, forgive us, God, for being so stupid. Help us, Lord, help the bride, help the church, God's spirit, and the bride say, come, drive us. Drive us out of that place. Drive us out of that fear. Drive us out of that upper room, Lord, praying for more fire and more wind and more rain, God. Remind us that you've already poured it all out. Holy Spirit, you're ready for all flesh. We're just not ready. Help us be ready. Help us be ready. I just want to close tonight with just declaring a word over you. The Lord gave me this word earlier this week. I was able to share it with a group of prophetic intercessors last night. And I'm, it's going to be short. I'm going to share just one small part of what the Lord showed me. And in a moment where I was just in the presence of the Lord, he, he was sharing with me a vision and was speaking to me about some things. And at the end of that vision, I just, I hear the words, balsam, balsam, balsam. And it's a tree, you know, a balsam is a tree. And it only shows up seven times in scripture, but four out of the seven are in the same story, twice in the same story, and it's repeated in 2 Samuel and 1 Chronicles. And it's this moment where David is, is instructed by the Lord to go in and kill the Philistines, and the first time he does it, he rushes right in, and the Lord breaks through, and they, they, they get a sure victory. But the next time the Philistines come, read this, ready? It says, this is uh, First Chronicles at the, toward the end of 14. It says, but after a while, the Philistines returned and raided the valley again. And then once again, David asked God what to do, and he said, do not attack them straight on. God replied, instead, circle around behind them. Skip it. Skip it, right? The circle. Circle around behind them and attack them in the new living. It says near the poplar trees. In the NASB, it says near the balsam trees. And when you hear the sound like marching feet on the tops of the balsam trees, go out and attack. What will, that will be the signal that God is moving ahead of you to strike down the Philistine army. So David did what God commanded, and they struck down the Philistine army all the way from Gibeon to Gezer. So I just want to leave you with a couple things. I'm just going to declare this over you. Number one, the, the Lord will do it again. It just may not be the same way. So just be prepared. And you have to be in that yielded place that David was. His heart was still in that field where he was so sensitive to the Lord Instead of rushing out again to kill the army, he paused. He said, Lord, is this, are we doing it the same way again? He said, not this time. You're going to actually going to go around and wait until you hear the sound. And if you read between the lines, 
the sound of the army of the Lord running on top of the balsam trees. And when you hear that, you'll know I've gone before you and the victory is yours. So number one, the Lord is going before you. But you need to press into him to receive the, the strategy of how the Lord is creatively designing victory for you. You have to be in that yielded place. You have to have ears to hear him. So the Lord is giving you the victory, but you need to wait on the Lord. And the Lord is going before you. But there's one little detail in here that I thought was really interesting. Especially with the way that tonight has gone. The victory, the battle was won between Gibeon and Gezer. Gibeon means it's a city on a hill. It's actually the city that was portioned out to the Levites of the tribe of Benjamin. And that's where the tabernacle stood in the reign of David and Solomon. That's where the Holy of Holies was. That's where the fire of God was moving, was on that hill in Gibeon. And then to Gezer. Gezer was portioned out to the Levites of the tribe of Ephraim. The tribe that didn't go into the promised land but encamped outside of it. And that portion of land given to those Levites was a harvest field. And the victory was won between the Holy of Holies and the field that was being harvested. And the priests were the ones that occupied both places. And tonight, what Pastor Zach was saying was, we need, to, we need to come before the Lord into that holy place, but you cannot stay there because the victory is won outside of the Holy of Holies. And the Lord gave David victory between the Holy of Holies and the harvest. And the Lord is calling us out if we would just be willing to submit ourselves to the yielding of the Holy Spirit and wait knowing that the Lord of Heaven's armies are going out before us. And that word balsam means weeping, lamentations, depression, hell down, sorrow. That's what balsam means in that valley they were in was the valley of Baca, which means it's the, it's the valley of weeping, the valley of depression, and God's armies ran on top of that depression and brought him the victory in the middle of it. And in Psalm 118 it says, and when my people walk through that valley of weeping, it becomes a spring of living water. And so Heavenly Father, right now I thank you for the work that was done in here tonight. And I declare, Lord God, that you are good, Lord, and that you are working all things for good. And Lord, that you are going before us, you are beside us, you are behind us, God. And the victory is ours because your word says you already won. And God, I thank you, Lord God, that I can stand firm knowing that you have trampled over the heaviness. You have trampled on the depression. You have trampled on the weeping and on the lamenting. You have, you have, you have trampled on the gloomy and sterile places. And you have already defeated them on your way into giving us the victory. And God, we just declare that the battle belongs to you and that we say yes and we say amen to the call that you have put on us tonight to go out from the city on a hill and go to the field and that your royal priesthood that are the soldiers in your army that we will walk in the power and the authority that you've given us God and that the battle that you are waging from the throne yes. room to the harvest the victory has already won and God, I seal the work that was done in here tonight, God. And we say yes, and we say amen to the words that you have spoken through the power of your spirit. And God, may everything that is of you, may it grow roots, may it grow fruit, and may it go deep down inside of us, God. And anything that came out here tonight that was flesh, Lord God, let it just be flushed away. Let it wither up and die. But Lord, may your word penetrate our hearts. May your word penetrate us all the way down to our DNA and cut down deep. Lord, and, and, and do what it is that only you can do in us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yeah. Amen. And I've searched the world. Come on, before you go, sing it with me. Sing. But it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures that fail. I never enough. you came along and put me back to
Hallelujah. Amen. God bless y'all. Have the best night you ever had. We'll see you on Sunday.